One of the biggest mistakes I see people make is in the way that they train for shooting on the move or the way that they incorporate movement into their training programs. All right guys, check it out. So we're gonna start off with what I call the short movement package. You know, the old saying goes, the longest journey begins with what? That's right, a single step. So this is our short movement package. So before we talk about that though, I wanna talk a little bit about movement principles and, and why when we, as soon as we strap a gun on, we start thinking about movement a little bit differently. And it's really crazy if you think about it. Everybody's familiar with the concept of muscle memory, uh, you know, doing a repetitive skill and, and studies vary wildly as to how many repetitions and perfect repetitions it takes to really ingrain that as a subconscious competence, that, that true muscle memory. But when we go to the range then, so often we're taught a new way to do things and, and you know, whether it's law enforcement training and that filters into the, the regular armed citizen community, whether it's military training, some drills that are designed to teach the masses don't necessarily mirror what really happens in an actual encounter. And it really screws up the entire system. So we try to rewire ourselves into doing some crazy things. The first place that we start off in, in teaching movement is we talk about turning movements. It's commonly referred to, or what used to be referred to as pivot drills. So we would train pivot drills, and I did as a, as a Marine and as a cop, we would do those pivot drills, and they were designed as a very controlled drill. And if you've ever done pivot drills, you know how that, that they're taught. And I taught them like this before I, I really began to understand how these encounters worked and got some experience under my belt. You know, we talked about those pivot drills, and if you've ever trained them, you know, all we're looking to do is move, you know, change our body's orientation. We're in one direction, we have a threat in another direction. Why pivot at all? Why not just turn and shoot? Well, pivots and, and turning movements like we call them are very important to set ourselves up to be able to move effectively afterwards. Because it's it's not just good enough to turn our bodies. That's not how it's really gonna happen. We're not gonna turn, shoot, and engage our threat and just say that's good enough. We're gonna turn, the movement dynamics are gonna continue. You know, that adversary is also gonna be moving because shooting at people tends to make them move and getting shot at tends to make you move. So those principles are gonna really change the way that you interact. They change the angles. These fights are all a game of angles. Everything is a game of angle. Think about it, a fist fight, a gun fight. It's all angles. Increasing and decreasing angles, positioning. It's very important. So movement is key and those turning movements to set our hips up to be able to move is very important. Here's the great part about it and this is what we're getting to in this segment. You don't have to think about it. Okay. If we think about it and try to train a different response in a pivoting movement, we're doing it wrong. About a minute ago, I talked about muscle memory. Think about this. What skill, now not an, an unconscious skill like breathing or digestion, what skill do human beings have more muscle memory in than anything else? Yeah, I know, you've probably got some crazy ideas right now. The guys in every class come up with some wild ideas to this when we get a good chuckle out of it. But the truth is, it's walking, moving. You don't have to think about it. All I need to consciously decide, my tactical decision-making process, I must decide what direction I want to move. But I don't have to think about picking my foot up, turning it a certain way, doing a certain thing. And if you've ever seen pivot drills taught before, we'll show you a close-up drill here. So conventional pivot drills, the way that they were taught. If you remember, you were probably taught whichever side you were turning to, drive a nail, transfer the weight to the balls of your feet, good aggressive athletic stance like you should be, but drive a nail through that forward foot, that lead foot, that turn foot. And then what you're gonna do is pivot your body and, and pivot on that nail. So my left foot here, if I have a, a spike driven into that, I'm gonna dig that foot into the ground and I'm gonna turn and pivot downrange towards my threat. If I'm turning this way, I drive a pivot into here, and I'm turning and pivoting into my threat. On stones, it's, it's a little bit uncomfortable, not really great, but the problem with that is that's not natural. So what we're talking about, that pivot drill, think about how ridiculous that looks. If I'm pivoting here, I'm pivoting and I'm turning. Think about how ridiculous that is. Think about your day-to-day -day lives, even if you're under stress. If something happens, a spontaneous incident occurs, um, you know, a car backfires, somebody drops something behind you and you turn towards it, uh, you don't move like that. The body doesn't move like that. I don't care how many repetitions you do. Dash cam footage, helmet cam footage, we don't see anybody turning towards a threat in that manner. What we see is them turning in a normal manner. <clears throat> Just regular, let their body work. That muscle memory you have in that turning movement, you don't need an additional skill set. You've got everything you need. You've been born with it. You've had it since you've been about one year old. Uh, 10 months to 12 months, most, most human beings are walking. So you've got a ton of muscle memory in walking and turning. You understand how to do that. So it would really be ridiculous if I were facing away from the camera and you know, if Ben were to call my name, it would be ridiculous for me to go, yes, Ben, what do you want? 
I mean, think about how stupid that is. Think about how you would move. And do you think you're going to move like that under any level of stress? You don't. But we just turn normally. So what I'm driving at, and a theme I'm going to come back to in all these videos that we hit on movement, forget your feet. That's what I always tell guys in my classes. Forget your feet. Don't worry about them. Plot your course in your mind. Decide where you want to go. Map out and make that decision. Listen, when the bullets are flying, you got enough things to worry about. You don't have to worry about trying to do some fancy dance and tango with your feet. Forget them. They're going to get you there. Forget everything you've been taught about moving and using your feet. Cross steps and all those different things that you've been told will get you killed and you'll fall over and die in a, in a horrible blaze of glory. It's not like that. We can move. I've got too much to think about. I've got too much to react to. I know I need to get over there. I know my bad guy's over there. I can't think about how I'm going to pivot and turn and which foot should I be leading forward with and how can I not. Great thing is I won't think about that anyway. So it comes back to another central theme that we always run in our training. And that is simply this. We shouldn't ever be doing things that really fight our body. Our bodies are really hardwired for survival. And sometimes some of those instincts are great. And we need to enhance those and use our training to enhance those survival responses, not fight against them. These crazy, stupid range pivot drills, that's fighting against our body's natural responses. Our body wants to get low and aggressive and move in a direction that makes sense for us. I don't need to think about it. So starting off with this pivot drill, so we're getting ready, we're going to load up here and just shoot a couple demos, but we really don't need a lot of demo in a pivot or a turning movement, but just show you a couple little drills that we're able to run utilizing a turning drill and things that you can work on with a buddy um, or work on even with yourself and, and really enhance that turning movement. Okay, so we're going to start taking a look at some of these turning movement drills. Again, remember we're getting away from the word pivot. Hate that word, it's not the way our bodies work. So we just make a turning movement. You can see I've got a steel target on my left here. So I'm facing, I'd have to make a turn to my left or about a nine o'clock turn here to engage that threat. So just gonna start off, show you one of the drills that I do. And I basically just take some clock positions. You can run those one through 12. You can work on the standards to start off with, the 369. So the 290 degree turns and the 180 degree turn. Turning in all directions, but forgetting our feet. Remember our, our core, forget your feet and just move your body. Make the decision where you want to go, how you want to orient yourself. Let your feet do the rest. There's one thing that I do say to this though, and here's the key to the drill and the key to anything we do. Again, we're enhancing that natural response. So our natural response under stress, our natural response in a fight is to lower our center of gravity. So as we train this, let's train that lowered center of gravity. So as we make those turning movements, we don't have to think about it, but I know that I want to get facing that target. I want to get my hips squared to that target to open up my movement but I want to lower my profile. I want to be aggressive and athletic. Those are the two words that I use all the time. Aggressive and athletic stance. So as I make my movement, aggressive and athletic. I also want to use simultaneous function. So as I'm making this turn, I'm beginning my draw process. Now, if I'm in a nice 360 range by myself, I could draw out and, and by the time I've turned, I'm not muzzling anybody. In a training environment, I know I have to be down range before I clear, clear my holster and begin to present my my pistol on target. I know that I can't sweep my buddy as I'm training with them, that that's not safe. That's a range safety rule. That's not one that's flexible or negotiable. That has to stay. It has to be exactly what it is. So I got to wait till I'm down range. Here's the great news. I'm not that fast with my hand speed to be able to be down range, to not even be down range. If I turn, my hips are down range by the time my gun's coming out of the holster, but it's all happening at the same time. Here's another thing I see folks do wrong all the time when they do turning drills. As soon as we get ready to set up and do a turning drill or we start working those principles in and we're, we're changing our, all we're doing is changing the orientation of our hips. Once we do that, people start to bury their heads in the sand. We call it the ostrich. So they get ready and they go and they look down in. You know, we've all been taught that we lead with the eyes. That's natural. We're taught it and we focus on it. You don't have to be taught it. You're going to do it naturally. You're going to lead with your eyes. You're going to perceive a threat. We're ocular based predators. So seeing that threat, we're going to turn and look at it. That helps drive us. So why would we ever bury our head in the ground when we're practicing a drill? Don't do that. Keep your situational awareness up. So some turning drills would look real simple, just like this. I can be at the range. I know I'm set up for a left-hand turn. I can fire some shots, scan, assess, holster back up, and just turn my body random direction. Look a little bit like this. I can work up now. You can see now I'm going to be set up for a right-hand turn, but it wasn't a pivot. I'm just turning and moving my body. I don't have to be set up. I can be talking and then turn. Make my shot. As I'm talking, as I'm distracted, and you can do this with partners. The next drill we're going to do here with Ben is we're going to move him in and do another drill. I can be facing this way. Now when I'm up range, which way is up range, right? 
which way do I turn? Well, that might be dependent on my situation. I may be against a wall, against a car. I may not be able to. I may have to duck step to turn in a very narrow spot. I may have to pivot and turn in the exact area I am. I may not be able to swing that big gate. That's why we get away from the pivots and we just turn. So as we turn here, we... And again, these are all really, really simple principles. I'm just making that turning movement. Now, in a real encounter, would I just turn and stop? No, I probably wouldn't. Real encounters, as we get to the next couple series in this video, we're gonna see how that's gonna be a turn as I set my hips to move. That's the real, that's the real movement principles. I'm beginning to move. I'm not standing stationary, but crawl, walk, run. That's how we run this. So these are turning movements. The next drill we're gonna check out, I'm gonna bring, on, bring Ben on camera here, and we're gonna take a look at what I call the clock drill. Okay, what we're going to work on now is a clock drill, Ben. So what I'm going to have you do, this is a turning drill. So what you're going to do is you're going to be facing down range. I want you to imagine 12 o'clock being your, your target and lay a clock on the ground at your feet. So what I'm going to have you do, I'm just going to have you standing here, holstered up. I'm going to start calling out clock positions. As I call out clock positions, I simply want you to turn to that clock position. So as I call, you know, three, four, whatever clock position, you just turn your body. You're not going to do anything to it. I'm going to spin you around back and forth. You're going to feel a little bit of silly. The faster I call the clock positions, once we do this a few times, you'll start getting a little bit disoriented. This is a perception drill. It's helping you understand where, down, where your threat could possibly be, finding your threat, and getting you to forget about trying any crazy pivot movements, but just letting your body move naturally. I'm going to continue to call those clock positions. You're going to continue to turn. Once I give you the threat command, I want you to orient yourself to the threat, and I want you to get at least four good hits on that steel. So you fire as many rounds as you need. You gotta know that you're making solid hits. You gotta be calling those shots, know what you got going on down range. Make those good hits, get at least four good hits. Not just four shots, maybe five, maybe six. Get good four upper thoracic hits from wherever you are. So you're just gonna keep spinning. As soon as I give you that threat, orient down range, give me four hits. You got the drill? You got it. Cool, man. Let's face down range, get it going. All right, stand by. Four. Two, get aggressive with it. Turn like you have a purpose here. Seven, four, nine, three, six. All right, holster on. All right, here we go. We're gonna run a drill. We're gonna run a drill again. And here's what I want you to do though. Not so much of a hop. I want you to just focus on making those good turns aggressively. Think that you would need to be able to move in, in as soon as you get into that position. So not so much of a hop, turn. The other key thing is, man, don't worry about being fast. Worry about being correct. The biggest delay is making that correct decision. I'd sooner have you pause a second, make sure you turn in the right direction, than I would have you jump into spots as fast as you can. No one's getting points for speed here. You're getting points for accuracy, just like in a, in a real fight. You've got to be accurate. You've got to be precise in this, not necessarily fast. Speed will come with practice. Speed will come with stress. And as that threat happens, man, you're going to speed up, but be accurate first. So go ahead and face back down range again at 12. All right, stand by. Six. Twelve. Two. Ten. Nine. Four. Seven. Three. Four. All right, man, go ahead and scan holster. All right, guys, that was the clock drill. What'd you think, Ben? I liked it. Uh, made me think a little bit on where I had to turn, and then uh, I never knew when the threat would be called, and then I had to think about that and react uh, accordingly. Yeah, check it out. So that, what that, that delay that you experienced, a little something that we call mental clutter. So it's nothing compared to a, a real mental clutter of a, of a fight, but it's, it's something that you know two guys training on a range can, can provide that to each other. There's another wrinkle to that drill we can do, and you actually enhance that a little bit more, and as you call the threat out, you call a second number, and that's the number of hits that's required. So it just keeps your perception in there, keeps you in the game, but it's a good drill to really get you moving around and, and get you to, to, to forget about your feet. Do you look a little bit silly? You do, but it's a good training drill for a purpose, and it sets us up. Understanding that's not the only movement principles. We got other places to go. A turn only sets us up to move appropriately. So we're going to take a look next at that single step movement. Sounds good.